Good morning. <clears throat> I'm going to pin you. So let me just make sure I am where I need to be. So as we're live. Alrighty. You know what, I should have checked to make sure what Wi-Fi I was on. There we go, at the top. Good morning, Wanda. Nice to see you today. Hope you're doing well in Ohio. Let's see, turn the volume off. Okay. Hi, Kathy. Good morning. Hope you're doing well today. Also in Ohio, I see my Ohio friends joining me today. We have a very overcast, gloomy day here in Maryland, but we have some sunshiny, bright, fun stuff to make today. Thanks for sharing. I really appreciate that. Thanks very much. Happy hump day. Yeah, apparently, <clears throat> I'm going to say, honestly, I'm really happy that I was able to get on Facebook as easily as I can because apparently Facebook has changed their live protocol I don't really know what that means, but a lot of people have been having a lot of trouble getting on to their lives, to getting to start how they normally do. So luckily, so far, I haven't had any problems, but I'm sure notifications are nil. So just remember, I go live virtually every Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and then a lot of times in between. So they close the beaches. I know they did that here in uh, actually in Maryland and Delaware. Good morning from Vermont. Hi, Adrian. Hi, Lori. Pamela, good morning. Thank you all for the shares. I appreciate it. Hope everyone is doing well today. You're all washing your hands and stocked up on the white rolls of stuff that we need. Good morning, Karen. Thank you for sharing. Hi, Carolyn. I did mail out five um, prizes yesterday. I was day late. Sorry. Running a little behind here. Kind of hard to keep on schedule. Hi, Diana. Hope you're feeling well. So I did send those out. I have a couple more people that haven't. Hi, Stacy. Hope you're doing well up there in New York. Hope everything's taking a positive turn. Good morning, Terry. Cloudy, Connecticut. That's kind of what it is drizzly here too, but Kathy. Hi, Fran. Fran, I mailed yours out yesterday too. Patricia. So I hope you guys are doing well today. So I'm going to show you what we're going to make today. And we're going to make a different version. And there's a couple different ways you can do this because you can add different stuff to it. But I made this little, ooh, the glare is bad, this little treat holder. You'll see them a little better when we back up. Used a little bit of designer series paper. I also used a white um, circle. I just used punches for this because I was trying to make it simple because maybe not everybody has um, the layering circle dies. And pardon me if I'm a little, because I took, uh, I had to do my inhaler twice because I was having some coughing this morning. I don't think I'm sick. I think it's just, I don't know if it's allergies because it is, everything is in bloom here, which is just crazy because <laughs> it's not even the end of March yet. But sometimes when it really hits, it makes me a little goofy. So apologies ahead of time. But anyway, I tried to make this simple that way in case maybe you don't have all the things. Also, if you don't necessarily have this dye, which this is the all dressed up die so you do need to cut two of these um you could probably make it a different way i have lots of different box ideas so you could always change it but i'm going to show you a couple other things you could do with this i've seen lots of ideas for lots of different things this one i think is kind of cute because it looks a little bit like an overall but you probably could also i was toying with the fact of actually putting the loops on this way instead so what i did was i actually used two um <laughs> You know, I should probably check because what I used could be retired. You know me and my keeping up with the uh, actual correct things that I think we still carry and sometimes we don't. Hold on, I also have my club cards in here that we were going to do. Let me go over to the Brad section. Okay, so let's see. Metallic brads. Nope, these are the little ones. So the ones I used <laughs> are retired. I know that's shocking. But I'm going to show you what I used, and I'm going to show you something that's also available. So I used these brads. If you guys remember, I used that um, 24 Days of Christmas box. Let's see if I can get in there and show you. These brads have a little bit, they kind of look like a button element on the front of them. 
But there also are, um, so these are retired, but there's also these tinier brads, which are called metallic brads. Those are available. They're 146929. They come in, I believe it's copper, silver, and gold, it looks like. Oh, no, copper, gold, rose gold, and silver. So they all come in a pack together. Now, you might have to make your hole a little bit different. And I'm going to show you what I actually used for mine, which I joined Stampin' Up! long after the Crocodile came. So I actually got mine on Amazon. This one is the We Are Memory Keepers brand. But it does the same thing. The only thing is, though, the hole might be a little bit big for those brads, so you might be better off just doing it with the paper piercing end of the Take Your Pick tool, or if you happen to still have a paper piercer, you could use that as well, or any other kind of a small hole punch. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, yeah, I don't think you could do it. You have the brad closure on here, too. I really miss brads. I wish they would bring those back. Those were really fun. I don't know if I was the only person that liked that. I actually had the tool where you had to make the hole and then you hammer it down. I still have that, as a matter of fact. But anyway, I use this to make my holes. But I thought maybe if you didn't want to do it this way, just to change it up, you could actually make them so it went across this way would be kind of neat. So it would just be a different shape. So you can play around with it. And then what I did on the back, if you can see there's holes here, I actually closed this with um, glue dots, mini glue dots. You could do that instead and then not even worry about doing the holes because it does does stick. And then you could just add a little embellishment to make it decorative. So you don't really have to do the brads like I did in there. So there's lots of ways that you could do this. Lots of options. It does stand on its own, which it's probably not gonna stand on my hand, but it does stand by itself. So it's really cool that way. And I have a couple different ways you could do it. So we could do one as Easter, you could do it as spring. But the cool part about this is you could also make it into virtually any theme or season that you need just by changing out the paper. So I'm going to show you what I did. And then we're going to do a bunch of alternatives. Now remember, it does take some time to cut. So that's the only thing that's going to be a little bit of a pain in the hiney. If you have this one, Welcome Easter, you could use this. If not, you could also use uh, Wildly Happy, which has the little baby, um, it's an elephant and a baby elephant, a bunny, I can't remember, the and a fox. So you could use those too because they're cute little little animals that are Eastery. So you could use this, you could use that. If you have something retired that you maybe don't have something new Easter-wise, you could use that and color it in. So you have some, I have so many brads too. I really miss brads and I miss, oh, you maybe those things are called rivets what I'm thinking of. The ones where you actually had to tap them into place. I don't know. Whatever they were. Eyelets. That's them. I love eyelets. Thank you, Terry. I finally uh, had some sense come back to my head. And then I remember when we did our live the other day, I mentioned something about these, but I already actually made these. So if you're looking for quick Easter cards, I do have a video. It's on YouTube. You probably can find it on here as well, but it's easier to search on YouTube. So they're quick e um, DSP Easter cards. So we just use little strips. And these used, actually, surprisingly enough, I used uh, Bird Ballad paper for two of these. And then this one is the Tropical, um, I think it's called Tropical Escape. I could be wrong. But the DSP, that's the new DSP. So I just kind of went for, like, soft backgrounds. So lots of easy stuff. And then another Easter card, which I'm not sure if I did or didn't share with you guys. But this one actually uses the Tropical DSP as well. But it uses the... Um, daylily side and then I use a piece of vellum so that was a super simple card to make so lots of easy things you can do eyelets and brads galore we should do a song like the little mermaid I've got eyelets and brads a plenty god knows I do I've got gizmos and gadgets galore I do I'm not going to keep singing because it's going to be ridiculous but anyway I'm going to flip you down you keep asking Jared if he'll be home for dinner and you get the stink eye what the heck Jared I'll come over and eat your dinner <laughs> All right, so let me flip you down. So if you get a little motion sick with the movement, just give yourself a minute. I'll tell you when we're flipping back. All right, so let's see if I can get this off here without any major catastrophe. All right. Make sure that's in. Okay, everyone. So we are all settled in there. It's hooked in and looking down. So if you need, to, need it to look away, you can look back. I'm seeing that Facebook runs about 10 seconds or so behind, so just in case, it is all settled. All right, so 
let me show you what I've been uh, pulling out. Oh my gosh, look at all these. Do you remember when glue dots used to come on this? I've been pulling out all kinds of <laughs> stuff and using it this week. Isn't this funny? They were these little sheets and you peeled them off. My goodness, how far we've come in the technology of glue dots, right? Okay, so for this, let me put this paper over here. And let me just show you just for a moment how this does. It stands up on its own, so it's very easy. You do need to cut two of these. So you can get two of these out of a 8.5 by 11 sheet if you cut it across the top, and then you'll have a piece left over for something. So what I'm going to do, and I haven't actually cut this yet. I did make one only because I wanted to see how to assemble it. And I'm going to show you one other thing I did. You don't need strips on both sides, Smarty Rachel, because this side is the bottom. So <laughs> I've already learned from what I've done incorrectly. So I'm going to cut this. That way we have a strip. So I thought we would do something other, another one that's bright. So we're actually going to, I'm going to try to make two because what I want to do is I want to do a one that we run through the embossing folder, which I haven't done that yet. And then I'm going to do another one where we actually put a panel of DSP on the front. So we'll see how those go. I haven't done those yet. So I'm going to measure this and see what we are across at the farthest point. I feel like if we cut at five, we should be good. So I'm going to cut this at, let me make sure it looks like it lines up okay. I like to line up if you have a straight edge. Yeah, so five looks good. So I'm just going to cut this down. And this will be 5 by 11, so we can use this extra piece for something else. And then this should go through, there's one there, yep, this will go through twice. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to grab my big shot, let me move this out of the way. And we're going to run this through two times, and actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to do, I'm going to cut four of them. So instead of running this one through, I'm going to run this through twice and then I'm just going to grab another paper and we'll run that one through twice. That way we have this done and the rest we can kind of move on. So I just kind of line this up as far as I can get it to the edge. You don't have to do this, but I'm just do it for some reason because I'm a little crazy. And then I'm going to turn it just a little bit because you don't really want the straight edge of anything with the roller pressing directly on it because it can warp it a little bit. So I kind of try to put it just slightly askew. So I have my paper a little bit askew and I have my die a little bit askew on the paper. So I'm going to put this through and whoopsie, hold on, just moved. And I'm going to crank it. You really only have to do it once. It does cut very well. So I have this one with my magnetic platform. All that cracking is normal. It's just pushing it through and I'll bring this back so you can see. So we pull this out and we have one. So there's one. And then I'm just going to do the same thing over here. And pop it through again. So I have so far an orange, which is mango melody. I have a bright yellow, which is pineapple punch. So I feel like I want to do a green <laughs> and I think I might do mint. I know how much Donna is going to love that. Actually, maybe I'm going to send this to her. <laughs> oh, heavens. I'm a joker and I? I am going to do mint though, because I really like mint. So we're going to do this one as our alternative project. So just give me one more sec. I just have to cut this down at five. So this one we'll do as our non Eastery one. We'll make one that's like a regular one as well. Now, one other thing you need to do is you remember that you also need to, if you have this, I'm going to show you, and I should have done this ahead of time, but I didn't. You also have this long piece that cuts the handles. Now, if for some reason you're going to make your own, you could also just cut a, uh, this is probably about a mm, quarter inch strip, and let's see how long it measures. six, about six inches. So you can cut a piece and then you can just wrap it around. So you could do that too if you don't happen to have this. This does come as a bundle though. So this is part of the all dressed up suite. These are the all dressed up dies. So this is the one that has all the coordinating. I'll just share it with you. Well, I have it here. It has the perfume bottle, the lipstick, the um, 
really cool high heel pump, the perfume bottle, all kinds of great stuff. So you can use those. If you buy it together, you do get a 10% discount. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I'm going to run this through one more time for this one. You love mint. Donna loves mint. I think Donna secretly loves mint. She just doesn't want us to believe it because how could you not love mint? All right, so there's one. So you can see it does cut really easily, and then it has the score lines here, and then it has the stitching detail. So it's a very cool-looking die cut. All righty. Maybe Donna just hasn't found her actual correct shade of mint yet. <laughs> Donna, did you like, um, oh goodness, what was that other one? Did you like pistachio pudding? Because that was kind of a minty color and that was really one of my favorites. I loved pistachio pudding. Do you guys remember that color? All right, so we have those. Oop, this has a little bit of a booger on it. All right, so there's that. So then... I'm just going to run this through. Let's see. I'm just going to do this. So same thing. When you do this, especially because this is a long die, it is a lot of pressure. So you want to kind of put it so it's not taking any pressure straight away like this. You want to put it to the side. So for some reason, sometimes the magnets get a little goofy here with these smaller ones. Just kind of line it up to the end. You can always put a little piece of purple tape over it. Run that. So you will need two, depending on how you want to do it. You could also make it so it was an open, um, open concept bag, so you don't have to have the handles on it. So that's another thing you could do. I'm going to run this one through once more. And then, again, as I said, I have not actually done the embossing with this yet. So what I want to do is, I am I think we probably should fold it first. That way we at least have the score lines kind of intact. And then we'll run it through the embossing folder. But I don't know. I haven't used it for that purpose yet. So You never had pistachio pudding. That was a really pretty color. That one was along with um, crisp cantaloupe, I think. Coastal Cabana. Yeah, that was like the 2015 in colors. As a matter of fact, one of the prizes I sent out, I did send out some really pretty raffia. And it was, and I think it was in the 2013, 2015 in colors. Could be mistaken. All right, so for this one, this will be the first one. I'm going to show you basically how you're going to score this just kind of to start, okay? So what you're going to do is you're just going to fold it on the score lines, which are, I will say, they are a little hard to see. And a couple times when I've done this, I've accidentally scored it on the uh, the dots instead. But just kind of work with it. And then when you, you get it where you want it, take your bone folder and just give it a nice press. Same with these. These are the flaps that are going to adhere together. Pull this one down. So has anybody done any um, exceptional cleaning or organization of anything they want to brag about? Because I haven't. <laughs> I did clean the bathroom yesterday. This one I kind of just fold because actually once you put it together, it does give it a nice fold in the uh, once the bag is together. So you don't really have to, to fold this hard if you don't want to. You can kind of just do an easy fold of it. But let me see. Follow this along. All right, there's one. I do the same on this one. I have friends that are that are cleaning and organizing to no end, and I gotta say, I am very proud of you. I'm just not that kind of a person. I'm not. I get very overwhelmed very easily with cleaning products, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, I saw. I think uh, Kathy shared this on Facebook today about. Um, that they realized they they just didn't they thought they never had the time to clean anything. Turns out that wasn't the real problem. <laughs> and I thought that was pretty hilarious because that is about the truth in my life, that's for sure. I just don't think I am a very 
I'm definitely not a type A personality. I can tell you that for sure. Okay, so for this one, these are our two pieces. And then all you're going to do is you're going to put some tear and tape and you're basically going to just put them together. Now, one, one thing I will tell you, if you are going to decide that you want to punch holes and do this with brads, it's way, way easier if you do it now because I figured that out after the fact. Because kind of getting that crocodile in there, it's not really easy. It's not terrifically hard, but it's not super easy. So if you wanted to do holes, I would kind of um, decide that you could actually probably do them both at the same time so they even lined up. You could put them through here and you could, which one's the smaller one? You put it through here and you could line it up and then punch your hole. But for this one, I'm going to skip holes because I already did one with holes. So we'll just do one with regular uh, ties on it or regular loops. When you have these loops, what you're going to do is you can kind of do it with your fingers. Oh, just gave myself a paper cut. Dang. Mm. Don't do it with your fingers because you might hurt yourself. <laughs> you could do it with your fingers if you're being careful. Dang, that really hurt. That's Facebook Live for you here. I'm not going to give this one anybody. It'll end up being bloody. Or you could use your bone folder. I need a Band-Aid stat. So, oh my gosh, if that was not the... That was funny for me. So if you're laughing, it's okay, really. I'm not, I'm not that hurt, but I'm just... I don't know why I'm surprised that I did that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my tear and tape, and I'm going to put this on, but I don't really know what we're going to do with this 100% yet. I wonder if uh, tear and tape will seal up my wound here. I might have to put a little piece on here just to see. I'm going to put that over. That'll be my Band-Aid for now. <laughs> Multitasking. So I'm going to take my tear and tape. And the one thing I will tell you, so this is, the tear and tape is really, really close to the size of this. Like it's almost going to hang over just a little bit. So I did use a different type of adhesive when I did this. If you guys are familiar with this, this is a um, Sukwang tape. They have different widths that they sell. Oopsie. So I use this one because it was thinner. It's probably a little bit too thin, but it is very strong, so it held it. This is a Terran tape that I think came at one point in the um, paper pumpkin that we had, but it's the same size as ours. So it's a little bit wide. So if that bothers you, you could use... Um, liquid glue. You could use a different brand if you happen to have it that might be thinner. And remember, you only need to put the adhesive on one of these. And actually, I'm going to put it on the inside of this one. That way I can get it to hold. And make sure you press it down really firmly. So I'm going to do the same on this one, and then I'm going to see before I actually put it together. Put a little one here. You might not really even need it on this little flap, but I put it just for the heck of it. All right, so if we were going to put this together, let's take a peek here. So this is going to go here. This is going to go here. This one's going to be the outside flap. So we could put a little bit here. We'll just put it kind of, I'll put a little piece in the center on the outside. It's my one piece, and I'll just put a little teeny piece here to hold. So you want one on the outside flap, and then you want one on the inside flap. So this one is going to be our front because typically put the cover part that goes over and makes it look nice, this will be the front of it, okay? So let's do that. Now one other idea I had, and this most likely I probably should have done ahead of time, but you know, we, we do things here together so you know what not to do, and I make the mistakes for you. So what I'm going to do for this one I am going to, which one way, the way would be easier? I'm trying to think. For this little guy here, when I did this paper, I used the Mosaic Mood specialty paper because I'm going to tell you, this wasn't really my favorite side. It's pretty, but I used this because I thought it was very like an Easter neutrally background. So you could use a piece of DSP to kind of jazz this up if you wanted to. I don't know if I have anything that's necessarily really super yellow. Let's see, this one's kind of complimentary. It's not really exact, but so you could cut a piece of this 
don't know if I like that one as much. Let me see if I can if I can grab another paper that I think is gonna look a little nicer for what I want to try to do. Let me see. might be nice let me take a look at this let me see with the poppy if we have anything that has a little bit of yellow in it not too much oh this one actually has a nice kind of a nice pop let me see if I have this in my sample pack before I jump into this take a peek That, no, that's that one. All right, what I'm going to do, I have this piece here. My uh, Band-Aid isn't holding up so well, but at least I'm not bleeding all over my craft, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out this piece. And you probably only really need this. Nah, that's more of a an orange, but that's fine. We're going to use this one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a small piece. I'm going to go ahead and trim it. See what this looks to measure approximately at the widest. It's about eh, three and a quarter inches. All right, so I'm going to trim this to four because I usually like to use four inch strips. Worst case scenario, I'll use it for something else. So I'm going to take a four inch piece of this. I probably should have picked a piece that had a little bit more yellow, but too late. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run this through just really on this piece because all I want is this little piece here. I'm gonna run this through and trim just a little piece here and then we'll do the embossing for the other one since I've already cut this one. So same thing again. Put this in. Just like so. Oops, let me make sure I'm on the edge there. Put that there just in case. And we're going to pop this through. Okay. So then we have just this little piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim this. So that's gonna be for that one. And then we'll do the other thing I was gonna do for the other one. Okay. So I'm gonna grab my scissors. Now you can see this kind of just depends on what you wanna do. If you wanna trim at the dots, if you want to trim on the other side of the dots, you're not going to really have much. I'm going to trim just inside the dots. So you have your little dotted lines here, which is your stitching. You can see it much better on this yellow here. I'm going to cut just inside of that. Okay. Tell you one thing about that. There's albuterol inhalers. They give you the shakes like something fierce. My scissor holding game is definitely not on point right now. Okay, and then I'm going to take my paper snips and just go inside here. All right, so hopefully this is going to be close enough. Let's see too bad so that's cute so it's just enough inside of there now I'm gonna put this on with liquid glue that way if I goof it up I can move it around a little bit I'm just gonna put a little bit of not a lot you don't really need a lot just make sure you hit the edges especially up top there okay and where was my front? I said this one is the front. So I'm going to put this on the front. Kind of trying to line it so it's 
in somewhat evenly oops from all sides there you go that's good okay so there's that so this one's going to be just our regular plain spring one so I'm going to go ahead and do a couple things I want to show you you can use your uh, flat this people use this for picking up gems I find it works really really well I guess except when you're doing it live for pulling um, your release paper off of your tear and tape so I really like that if you are concerned with the fact of this may or may not line up exactly how you want, you can always put a little bit of liquid glue because it kind of gives you the strength of the tear and tape. But you have the maneuverability of liquid glue. So if you were going to do that, you just put like a little bead of this across and it kind of gives you the ability to be able to wiggle it around. All right, so I'm going to put this here. Just like so. Okay. I'm going to just tuck these little flaps up for now. Now, if you did this correctly, this one should line up exactly. Oh, that's a little piece sticking out. And if you're worried that you're not going to do it correctly, like I said, you, you could use liquid glue. You just have to remember you have to hold it a little bit. So when you put this together, as you see, you remember we didn't really score this. We kind of just folded it. It actually will fold in kind of nicely on its own. So you don't really have to do too much work. So I'm going to fold this little flap in. Fold this little flap in. I'm going to put this one down. So I put a little bit of tear and tape there. And then I'm going to pull... Oops pull this off so I don't really have the bottom pressed really firmly yet I'm still making sure I line it up the way I want it and then kind of pressing this to hold and then what I usually do is I'll go in with my bone folder and push okay so there's that so then here's our front so again, when I did this earlier, I picked, obviously we're going to do this for the other one, but I picked mint. So for this one, if you wanted to, your box will sit up on its own. So you absolutely don't have to add the handles. You could add them the other direction as well if you wanted to. So we could do that. Now, granted, we already put this so the front would be here. So you wouldn't want your front to be this way with your flaps if you're putting your paper on the front. But another way to do that, let me grab, move all this stuff out of the way. Grab this. I'm going to run this through two times. For something different, I'm going to do, um, just to kind of bring in another color, I'm going to do Poppy Parade. I think I have a piece. I think this is Poppy. Yeah, I'm going to run this through just two times. Attempt not to injure myself any farther. There's one. Okay, and two. Okay, so. <laughs> Once again, with my wounded thumb, I'm just going to very kind of gently curl this. And then I'm going to show you that you can put these on with glue dots, but I would suggest, this is just personal preference, I used two on each one. If that's a bit much for you, you certainly don't have to do it, but I'm just going to pull these off just to get rid of them. So what I did was, you can tell these are so old because they're sticking to the release paper versus the non-stick stuff. So I just took two of them together and put them on the back of each thing. Put two on each one. Oops. Uh-oh.
Oh, this hand shaking. So this is the fun part. I can breathe, but I can't hold anything. Okay, so there are those. So then what you'll do is you're going to just take your piece and kind of press it on there. And same on the back. Just press it on. If you feel like you want a little extra insurance, you could even add a little dab of uh, liquid glue because that stuff, once it dries, it is really, really sturdy. But two glue dots, I feel, is pretty, pretty good. And I'm just going to try my best to just line this up. One and two. <laughs> when you look at this, <laughs> it kind of reminds me of uh, Golden Arches colors. Anybody else? <laughs> All right, so there's that. So easy. Now, I did get these, just came in, as a matter of fact, yesterday with my order, and I did get my ladybug dies and my ladybug stamp set, so I am gonna do some sort of a drawing for that. So you could put these on here if you wanted to add a little something. These are the, the designer elements. So you have gold, silver, and copper so I think copper would look neat let's take a peek what you can do if you wanted to is you can even hold this peel these off they do have some adhesive oops that was one one went sh shooting across the room they do have uh, a little piece of adhesive that holds them on there but you can even hold just to see like which one is it gonna be too big is there one you would like a little bit better I'm gonna do copper so that's a cool idea so again we'll go ahead and use this since I have it out Put one here, and this could be in, pl in place if you don't have a uh, stash of brads and eyelets like me and all the other well-stocked stampers. So there's that. Kind of looks like some little overall buttons. Pretty cute. And then, let me move this over. We're going to stamp something on this. So, we have all these little friends we could put one of these on here you could even do this this would be a great idea for a little baby card if you wanted to you could do a happy spring you could do sweet friend that would even be cute just for something that's not necessarily eastery so let me see if i can find a scrap of something that doesn't have anything written on it so how about we'll do we'll just do the little chick and then we'll do sweet friend so i think that will be pretty cute because that one can be kind of on the oops on the smaller side there. So when I do my blends, which I did use for the bunny, I used Flirty Flamingo Light and Dark, and then I used Gray Granite. You want to use Memento Ink because you want to use a water-based, I believe this is a water-based ink, because you're using alcohol markers. Hopefully I'm correct in saying that. Move this over a little bit so we have some room to punch. Hopefully I stamped it down low enough. And then we'll do our little sweet friend. I have some scraps. Just going to grab a scrap of Whisper White. This is just from when I trim my paper up. Grab that. Okay. You can add, because I did add the little grass spots here on that. So you have a couple other little things. You could add some leaves. I'm going to just do the leaves. And then I just kind of trimmed it so it would fit around there. We'll just put a couple little leaves. Just to give it a little added something. You could add those little gems if you wanted to. And then I'm going to take, just to keep it light. So this is soft sea foam. That was uh, pear pizzazz. I'm just going to color this in just a little bit. All right, there's that. And you could trim this. You could add little, um, do, 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 do. what is the word I'm looking for here? You could flag the ends. We'll keep this one straight since we flagged the ends on this other one here. So this is going to be our sentiment. Now all we need to do is color in our little bird. So I'm going to grab, let's see, what do we have here? 
Daffodil Delight, light and dark. I'm going to grab light mango for the beak. And what other yellows? I feel like this is so saffron. Yes. And I think I also have pineapple punch. Yes. I'm going to do pineapple punch. Pineapple punch, daffodil delight, and then I have the light mango. So the mango will be for the beak. So I'll just do that ahead of time. And this bird doesn't really have to be a, and the feet, a chicken necessarily. You could do whatever, whatever kind of a little bird. You could make it blue. You can make it light of any other kind. I'm going to go ahead and start with the dark pineapple punch because it's a really, really bright color. Do a little bit on the wings. Okay, and then I'm going to bring in the light daffodil delight. Kind of give a little bit of a depth with having the different yellows, if you have them. And if you don't, you could just use the two that you have, but you can use different colors together. As long as they're in the same color family, they kind of, sometimes you can even use oranges and reds together. They really give a nice complimentary look. So I'm gonna get just a little bit of dark Daffodil Delight. Kind of just to give a little bit of depth in a few areas. And the dark Pineapple Punch. All right, so there is that. Then what I'm gonna do, I did get my punches ahead of time. So I'm gonna punch him with the two inch circle punch. Hopefully he'll fit in there nicely. So there's the two inch circle punch. It's a little bit tight, but it's okay. And then I'm gonna do, just to keep with what I picked earlier, just with the theme, I'm going to just punch out a two and a quarter. And I'm fairly certain this is still available, this punch. I'm pretty sure. I think we just lost the two and a half. Do that. That is in Poppy Parade. And then we'll put these two together. Now, you could pop him up on dimensionals. You could pop the whole thing. So what I did was for this one, I put the bunny onto the DSP, onto the white circle, and then pop the whole thing up. I'm going to pop the bird up for this one, and then I'll just attach it directly. So I'll just do three. And we'll put a little bit of liquid glue here. A little bit of liquid glue onto this. Okay, I'm gonna put this on first because I find it's a little easier. That way you kind of know where you're going to add him. There you go, so have that little guy there. Okay, so we're gonna do one more. And this one, what we're gonna do is we'll make this one a little bit more of a, uh, not really neutral, but kind of just a not specific to an Easter thing. So we have these two for Easter. This one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two pieces of mint macaron and I'm going to, let me put these markers up here for now. I'm going to actually run these through the big shot, but I'm going to emboss them. Okay. What, what I want to do first, just to kind of be on the safe side, two all beef patties. Listen to you two. You are funny. I love it. That's what I would take if I was going there. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to go ahead and fold these because I don't really want the creases to be lost. And I've never done this before, so I'm not sure if it probably is a good idea, but I'm going to be on the safe side. I'm going to go ahead and crease my, my folds and then I will run it through with the embossing folder. Let's see. What I need is for uh, my rainbow stamper to become a little bit more proficient at reading. So he could be my person who says my comments to me. <laughs> that way he can say, Mom, so-and-so said. Mommy, so-and-so said. All right, I'm going to fold this one too. Because I don't mean to ignore you guys. Just sometimes I get carried away and I feel like I'm in the room crafting with people and I assume that they would just interrupt me if they wanted to tell me something. Well, my tear and tape bandage has since fallen off, but it did stop the bleeding. I think the uh, the adhesive coagulated my cut there. <laughs> All right. 
Rainbow Stamper actually had a little um, meeting with his class today. They're going to start doing some online in-face or online video stuff, I should say, next week. Okay, so I'm not going to put the adhesive on this yet. So I did get my folds for the most part in. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run both of these through an embossing folder. And I had one here that I thought would be kind of cute. Just for something a little different. So hopefully this is going to fit. Let's see, I might need to get a bigger one. I don't really need to do the flaps. So what I'm going to do is this is the, I believe it's called layered leaves. So I'm going to do this and I'm going to concentrate on making sure that hopefully this won't be too much because it's a 3D folder. I'm going to make sure that this part up here is embossed, all the parts you will see and not really necessarily the flaps. So let's see how this goes. I'm going to put this in like so. And grab my big shot. Move these two guys over. So since this is a Stampin' Up! embossing folder, we're going to use the regular platform and just the blue plate, okay? So we're going to put this in. We'll see how it goes. Cross your fingers, say a prayer. Hold on. Sometimes these make me nervous. I feel like I'm going to do something wrong, so give me a second here to double check. Ugh, no, hold on. No, <laughs> Sizzix, dummy. Hold on there. That's why. I was only reading part of it. I'll go back to my other folders before I break my big shot. And now we'll no longer be embossing anything or cutting. This is the one that works. No, this one only needs the one plate. I really need to write this down. That way when I do it, I know what I'm doing. I think I say that every time too, don't I? All right, let's see how this looks. So that embossed pretty well. So I have a little bit on the flap, but again, it doesn't really matter. We'll put this here, this here. Okay, there's that. So there's one. So I'm gonna put the second one in. Doesn't really need to match match, but again, you just wanna make sure for the most part that you have this part all kinda in. So same thing again. So this is the Sizzix one, not the regular Stampin' Up! one. So don't listen to what I said because I was wrong. Regular Big Shot platform and one acrylic plate is good enough. If it doesn't say Sizzix, that's when you use the blue plate if it's a 3D folder. So there we go. Oh, Lordy B. It's sometimes a miracle I don't hurt myself, isn't it? <laughs> all right. So now just going to make sure all my creases are still pretty much intact. Yep. And I'm going to add my adhesive to this. So I'm going to use, where's the rest of that roll? Use the rest of this one up. Maybe that should be my new um, tagline. I make the mistake so you don't have to. <laughs> that might be pretty smart. I'm going to put a little piece in the middle top and then this one is going to go across the bottom and you probably don't need it on both panels but I'm just being safe and again don't forget while we're here I do have a um a blog hop I'm participating in this Saturday the team stamp it blog hop that starts at 10 a.m but also the other thing I was going to say in case you missed it last week I am going to start doing Freebie Friday is what I'm going to call it. So I'm going to start giving away some freebies. I'm going to draw some names each Friday. That way somebody can get some fun stuff in the mail. So make sure if you aren't already that you stay tuned for that. I'm not sure what time I'm going to do. Probably earlier than later. And then once I get on a set schedule, we'll, we'll work with that. But I, ha I, meant, I sent out some really fun stuff this week. That one's going to go on that side. Let's do this one. So this one could be for an everyday kind of a bag. If you needed to just make up a quick something. Maybe your neighbor is having a birthday and you can't get out and you just want to give her some. Like a little candy treat or 
give her a snail adhesive if you know she's a crafter or some other little type of a craft thing that you might have extra of. So that's one. It looks really nice embossed too, by the way. It gives a totally, totally different look. So I'm going to bring the second one in, lining it up. The inhaler is starting to wear off. I can actually grab things now. I'm just pressing this to seal it. You can always, too, if you feel like you're not strong, you can kind of go along it with your bone folder gently, but you don't want to push too hard because you can put a crease in there. So just be careful. So here's one. Fold that flap in. It's kind of just, just lightly holding it. It's not really too, not pressing too hard until I get this other one in place. Making sure it's straight. And then you can go in with your bone folder and just press, make sure it's all kind of sticking together. You can see you have your nice fold, so it looks really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead with the mint. I'm gonna use these, even though these aren't embossed, that's no big deal. I'm gonna take some of my glue dots, put two of these on each side, and then we will decorate the front. All we're gonna do is add probably maybe a sentiment could do a stamped image too but I don't know what I would want to add for this you could even just put on a little piece of DSP so I'm just putting two glue dots on each end because sometimes I just don't feel like one is enough for me so I'm gonna grab this put this here pressing again if you want a little extra insurance you can always add a little dot of liquid glue to this as well but I should have done this one sideways now that I thought of it since this was embossed all the way around that would have been smart I don't want to get these off and rip them so we'll just leave it like that for now so for this let us add some kind of a little something so let me grab I'm going to grab something a little bit more grown-up thing if I can find something quickly. This is cute. May your birthday be memorable. Maybe we can stamp a little flower in the corner. So let's do that. So we have this. May your birthday be memorable. And we'll do this little... I think that's a, a freesia. I don't know. If anybody knows flowers, let me know what you think it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab same thing again. Do do do. What happened to that little white piece I had? Here it is. So I'm going to stamp this, and then we'll stamp the flower, and we'll just be mindful of where we're going to punch it out. Okay. So let me do. I don't really want to do this. I'm not going to do it in mint. And actually, as a matter of fact, I'm going to make sure I turn this to the other side because I want this flap seam to be in the back. So this will be the front here. Let's do it in soft suede, just for something a little different. And then we'll do our flower in more of a bright color. Let's see if this works. All right, so that's so far so good. And let's grab do something kind of not really bright but something fun we'll do calypso coral and then I'm gonna grab my mango and we'll make a mango center hopefully that's gonna work out let's say so have calypso coral and then I'm gonna take the brush tip of my mango and just kind of fill in the center there a little bit and then when I'm done with this I'm just gonna wipe it off in case there's any coral on my marker all right so let's see if this is going to fit in the punch I think it's going to fit in this is the two inch punch yeah that fits in there pretty nicely so we'll go with that And we can just pop this directly on there. If you wanted to, though, we could even layer onto a little, whoops, a little, I wonder, I'm going to do coral. Let's see if I can get it out. I just got a whole bunch of paper. 
<laughs> that I ordered and I put it away. And now I have too many refill papers. I can't get my papers in my little cube like I like. So that is, should be two and a quarter inch circle punch. Just like that. So we'll do that. And then just to make it a little bit more fun, just to dress it up just a little. Let me grab them. Where are they? Tropical. I'm going to add one of these. I don't know if I want to add these on the this part up here or just add it onto this. So let me grab my dimensionals. Just do three. Just like so. I think I'm going to add it down here. Yeah. And I'm going to put this on with mini glue dot. Probably going to do a couple. So this is just a little guitar. So I'll put, whoops, one on the back. Is that working? There's one. This one I'm going to kind of wad up a little bit before I pick it up. Because the top of the guitar is a little bit more narrow. Oops. Still on there. Okay, just like that. And then all we're going to do is glue this. And I am going to put a good amount of glue because that little guitar is a little heavy. Just to make sure this doesn't pull it down. Could give this to my little neighbor friend. She's going to be celebrating her 13th birthday on Monday. So we're try to give her a little something extra special since she's not going to be able to see any of her friends. So we're going to do that. So this is cute. It's going to be memorable, that's for sure, right? I mean, <laughs> that this would be perfect for anybody, of course, this time because, you know, you're not doing a whole lot. It can, can't be much more than memorable. Those are the Tropical Oasis trinkets, though. So you do have the guitars, the pineapples, the uh, big palm fronds, and the hibiscus. So they're a lot of fun, a lot of really cute things. So I hope this gives you guys some good ideas. So let me move a couple of these things out of the way, and we'll be able to see it a little bit better. A couple different things. We have Easter. We have the one Easter you could do mixed up mixed up stamp sets. You can add a piece of DSP to the front. You could emboss it. All of them are great ideas, fun ways to make things different. You could even go so far as to, if you wanted to, you could have rubbed a little bit of um, Versamark over top of these and add a little bit of embossing powder and kind of heat it. I would do it if I did it though. I would do it with clear. That way it kind of gives a little bit of a shine. You could also, before you put it together, you could put some shimmer paint and a little bit of reinker in your spritzer and spray it. It'll give it a little sparkle all over. These again were both colored in with uh, the Stampin' Right alcohol markers. So they're light and darks, but we did use different colors. So this one was uh, gray granite and flirty flamingo for this one we used mango for the beak light mango for the beak and then we used pineapple punch light and dark and we used daffodil delight light and dark add a little bit of something down here with a sweet friend again they do stand up so you don't have to worry about oops except for that one i don't know why that one doesn't want to stand up maybe it's the embossing on the bottom is making it not want to stand up quite as well could be don't know but once they have something in it i know they will stand up so they do stand up so I hope you guys found this fun today. Thank you guys all so very much for hanging out with me. I hope you had a little bit of an escape from the daily grind of listening to what's going on. And remember to be happy. Do something fun for you every day if you have time, which I'm sure you do. You could make a craft. You could get rid of some of your old craft stash stuff that you've been hanging on to. I really, truly appreciate you guys stopping in. I did order, I want to tell you, I did order two new things. So I actually ordered... <laughs> Let's see if I can pull my catalog out here without knocking anything down. Because, oh, and one other thing I wanted to share with you, and I totally forgot up until now. Celebration does end on the 31st. So they did add some new items. In case you missed it, I did post this on my Facebook page. Um, these are some items that are actually in the annual catalog that you can choose. So the Rococo Rose Blends, the Butterfly Duet Punch, the Wild Rose Dyes. The detailed laser cut paper. There are three different DSPs. The Dino Roar, the Woven Threads, and Follow Your Art. You can get the mini shipping boxes. If you'll get those, you get two. 
The red rhinestone jewels, you would get two packs of those as well. So those are some new items that have been added to Celebration. Um, also, in case you missed it, the kerchief kit, the metallic baker's twine, and the bee paper, those are sold out. So those items are no longer available. We still have plenty of other stuff. If you'd like to join and be one of the rainbow stampers, you will get this additional stuff as part of your joining kit. You get your choice of an extra stamp set, and you get the mini cutter, and then you get a sampler of the 6x6 DSP. If you have an order of $300 or more, and that could be a group order, a um, if you want to have like an online party, you could do that. You can earn the Little Ladybug stamp set for free. And one other thing, so I wanted to show you this. I ordered, because we'll be able to use these, I was thinking we're probably going to need some ideas for Father's Day cards coming up. So I did order the Pedal to the Metal stamp set so when that comes in we will have that to do i ordered something else but darn it now i can't remember what the heck it was i feel like i ordered i think some dsp but we're going to make some cards starting soon with pedal to the metal so that'll be fun because i know sometimes we have to get some of our stuff in a little bit before then if we want to be able to make it because some of the things do sell out towards the end of celebration but we will also after easter passes we'll start working on some great mother's day cards we will also do some father's day cards i'm open to anything that you guys want to see created so if you have a suggestion for a card you'd like to see or a project or a theme or one specific a product that you'd like to see used like last week we did a whole bunch of different things that you can do with embossing folders so I think I can't remember who it was several people suggested that but the first person I saw that did it I said let's do that so if you have something that you want to see and you don't really know how to use it or you haven't seen a good video explaining how to use it please let me know feel free to leave a comment you can send me an email to reach the stamper gmail.com I'll be happy to make a video for you and we'll get that together I am going to try again to go on live one other day this week. I'm not exactly sure when or where, but I will be back on Friday. Again, we'll do our Friday freebies and we'll pick a few names and give some stuff away. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay healthy and put a smile on someone's face. Thanks guys for watching. Take care.